ABNC, America's Black News Channel. Watch us on all major cable providers and major streaming platforms. Finally, news that speaks to us. Pfizer is asking the FDA to authorize a fourth COVID vaccine shot for Americans 65 and older. The company is citing a decrease in immunity several months after the third dose. Pfizer CEO says the additional shot would dramatically improve protection. All right, uh, once again, we're not out of the woods when it comes to this pandemic, even if we're not talking about it as much as we used to. So let's talk more about it now and what we can do to prevent this from happening. BNC's chief medical editor, the man who always keeps it real, 100 with us, Dr. Corey Abair, joins us this morning. Uh, good morning, Dr. Abair. Um, well, look, cities across the country uh, dropping mandates uh, left and right. Uh, anyone hearing this news about Pfizer has to wonder why now, though? Why a fourth? Why a fourth shot? That second booster shot? Well, I do want to just say one thing. BNC is, is, is a great network, and I can say things like this. Remember, Guy, Teddy Riley, Aaron Hall. It ain't mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. Okay, remember that. Mm -hmm. We have Party to remember. We yep. it ain't over. We have to remember that. You know, mm -hmm. I was in Denmark a few weeks ago, looking at the BA two variant of the Omicron original variant, and it was sweeping Denmark and causing lots of problems. We realize that China now is shut down. And I don't mean, you know, well, they have a few cases. I'm talking about uh, uh, production for, for uh, goods is shut down, right? People are back in their homes in a draconian way. So, you know, we know that the BA2 variant is here. But what we have to remember is that we have a lot of immunity across our country, a lot of immunity. But across the world, we mm -hmm. do not. About 15% of the people are uh, uh, vaccinated across the world, which means that it's a perfect setup, a perfect setup for the virus to go a little bit dormant because it's going to be springtime and then gives the virus that time mm -hmm. to make a very strong mutation and then bounce back in the summer. So what Pfizer is looking at is if that were to happen, the people that are most vulnerable who at, at America at this time, who we have basically given to collateral damage, meaning poor people, brown people, people with pre-existing illnesses, the elderly mm -hmm. people with, uh, with immune systems being compromised. Those people are collateral damage. That's what America, even though much to my dismay, has basically said that's collateral damage because we're opening up everything. Those mm. people are going to need a fourth dose because they are going to be the ones at most at risk if the BA2 variant or a worse uh, uh, variant comes through uh, around uh, uh, the spring and the summer. Dr. Abair, here's the issue that we have, especially in our community, and we know this. Like you said, we're on the Black News Channel, so we're going to keep it real. How can we get people to take a fourth dose of a shot, a second booster, when a lot of people still haven't even gotten the first shot? Yeah, th th that's going to be a real hard thing, especially since people have we decided we're just going to open things up. But what I always remember is that I don't care how rare things are, okay? If it happens to you, it's 100%. And I have to really push mm -hmm. that, that, that envelope because... Who died the most? We did. Who died the most at the beginning? Mm -hmm. We did. Who's the most overweight? We are. Who's the most diabetes? We are. Who's the most hypertension? We are. So when this thing comes back, because we are the collateral damage, we have to do things to step up for our community. And that's why until this whole concept is over where it is uh, pronounced endemic, wash up, mask up, separate and vaccinate to the best of your ability is what you need to do. Keep those hands washed, keep those shoes out of the house. When you have a big community gathering, you know, keep the little mask on. People might look at you a little crazy, but it's okay because when they're at mm -hmm. home, not being able to do anything, you're gonna be back do at your house watching the news without, a, uh, you know, without having to have a, a, a ventilator to breathe. So this is, this is real to me, it's still real. Look, I'm, 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 I'm going to keep it real with you. Um, you know, I, I've, I've relaxed a little bit. I, I got my, sure. my booster. Uh, I'm looking for the fourth shot if I need it. I think a lot of people here in this country have relaxed a little bit. This is a sign of what it was when the pandemic first started over here two years ago. It was in other countries. It really wasn't happening in the United States. We felt like we were okay. Everything was fine. Think about this. You got the second gentleman, Doug Emhoff, who has COVID. We had the uh, former president, uh, our president, forever president, President Obama, he had COVID, and it was a blip in the news. Why do you think we have gotten so comfortable lately? Is it because the, 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 the numbers are going down? Even though the numbers are still high, why do you think we don't talk about it as often as we used to do it uh, back in the day? 
Yeah, it, it's just that people got COVID fatigue. They're tired. That's the first thing. And then what they noticed that all their friends got COVID, but not a lot of them died. People, I mean, just like everybody got Omicron. Mm. People did die. They just kind of got a little bit sick and they said, okay, we're probably at herd immunity. But once again, that's when we have these Facebook virologists that are thinking, oh, I'm going to make this decision. Well, it's going to probably be okay. You got to listen to folks, you know, that, uh, that that have been through this and know that, you know, when you looked at, you know, Asian people getting off the airplane seven years ago and they had on masks, you were kind of making fun of them at some point. Not you, but, you know, our, our, our whole United yeah. States society would make fun of them. But it was because they had gone through MERS and SARS-1 and they had persisted to wear those masks. And that's what we need to do. And as an aside, because I know our, our time is coming short. Um, as a proud graduate of Morehouse College, y'all need to listen to me because, um, you know, I'm always a proud graduate. I know you got some other stuff coming up about that, but, uh, you know, 1867, baby. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, all right. Make it happen, make it happen. And yeah, you know what? Look, the thing is, what, what, wearing a mask, I know you, you, you wear your fraternity, you wear your, your, your background on, on very much so on your sleeve. You can also wear the mask too. And a lot of people, even the people look at you like you're crazy, the mask not only protects you from COVID-19, it protects you from other types of diseases, including the common cold as well. So people need to realize that too. So there don't, you go. Yeah, and don't, I mean, don't let it be Can political. I get a medical? Don't, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't no, let it get but political. But that's what a lot of people want to make Don't let it get political. See, I, that's I, right, I, I don't, that's right. I'm not a doctor, but I, 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 I play one on TV, especially when I'm next to one that knows what he's talking about. Man, is always keeping it <laughs> real. Dr. Corey A. Bear, <laughs> always appreciate you, man. Much love to you, my brother. Your brother. You too. All right.